Hey everybody, Tracy White again, T. Earl on the forums at uh, UE4. So, um, we're back at the game. We're going to try to start getting some gameplay elements in here. Um, we know already that we have blueprints for the uh, button for the levels, and uh, whenever you roll your player over a button, um, it uh, triggers a gate, and the gate will swing uh, whatever uh, degrees that we set that. All right, and the button can control more than one gate, but in this very first simple level, we're going to have it uh, control just this one gate. Then we have our end tile, and we know that when we reach the end, it uh, it says it just does a print screen end uh, end level or whatever I said. <clears throat> All right, so I want to add a timer to this because I mean, if you're gonna try to make it through a level, what'll make it fun? Well, trying to beat your time or somebody else's time. So um, I put my timer on the ball pawn, uh, so our pawn. Uh, so right here in the physics ball uh, blueprint, I am going to add a timer. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into that. We're going to add a variable. This variable, let's call it uh, the time counter variable. And let's just do this by the second, so we'll make it an integer. That way we don't have to worry uh, too much about, uh, you know, the 1.23 seconds or whatever. Okay, so um, I think we should have the timer count uh, every second and on, uh, we'll trigger that off a tick. So we're going to put it on tick, uh, event tick, sorry, uh, event there, and we're going to run this through a delay and the delay will set to one second and I'm gonna bring my time counter variable in here okay so every time um, the event ticks every second uh, let's set the I'll, I'll bring in a set here set the counter and we're going to use that same we're going to get the time counter variable we're going to do a plus one to it so we'll do a plus integer plus integer and we're going to add one here and then tie it into here all right so the every time uh, the event ticks it'll hit this delay and then every second uh, we'll fire this completed node and set the time counter to itself plus one. All right, see how that works. And just to check to see how this goes, we're going to do a, a print string and we'll have it print itself. This will convert the integer to a string on its own. All right, go ahead and play the level. And um, you can see up in the corner that we have a timer and it's counting up. Well, that's really good. So let me go ahead and uh, drive through this level. And we'll see what happens whenever I reach the end. It should say end level, right? Awesome, level ended. But our timer is still going. So we want our timer to stop whenever we've hit the end of the level. All right, well, how do we do that? Well, I think we should probably add a, um, another variable. And we'll call it level ended. And we'll just make this a Boolean. All right, whoops, level ended. Yeah, I call it end level. Uh, since I'm using my original game as reference for all this and it's up on the other screen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep everything named the same. Okay, so uh, let's, between the event tick and the delay, let's set the um, a branch and that if uh, end level 
is true, um, then we're going to disconnect this and, and it'll go somewhere else later. But if it's false, we're going to go ahead and do our counter. All right. Well, how do we set end level? Well, that's a good question. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our blueprints and go to the end tile blueprint. And uh, what we had before um, is from the tutorial before is, is just printing a string here uh, saying, hey, uh, the level is ended. So I don't want it to do that anymore. I want it to talk to the ball pawn and say, hey, let's set uh, you know that variable to, to true so it'll stop counting. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of other actor and we're going to do a cast uh, to ball pawn. Where is ball pawn? Cast to physics BP. We're going to set our end level variable to true. All right, so, and I'll go ahead and hook up this print string again. So what should happen now is whenever I begin overlap on the end tile, it's going to cast to the ball pawn and set my end level um, boolean to true. Back over on my ball pawn, when end level is true, it's not going to do anything. But as long as it's false, we're going to go through and, and count. All right, well, let's give that a, a test. And the easy way to do this is going to be to remove those two walls so we can do this quickly. We're just going to go over here end level. Cool, it stopped. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a 4 after the trigger. Let's try that again just to see. See how it continued to count afterwards? Well, that's because we already had an event ticking and waiting in this delay to go through and set the counter. Um, it was it was in there kind of queued up in the delay even when the the end level was set to true so let's say to f to fix that <clears throat> I want to put a branch after my delay seriously oh I need to stop the level and then we'll say if end level is true then do nothing but as long as it's false it'll go ahead and set the counter. That way whenever end level is set even if there's a tick kinda queued up in this delay it'll still set this branch uh, to true and that way whenever that tick is passed through the delay um, it'll hit this true node not go anywhere um, instead of uh, going ahead and counting up the timer. Alright so we'll test that. And there, we're not going to have any more counts after that end level is set. All right, so that's kind of the basics of our timer. What we're going to use all of this stuff for later is um, saving the time, and we're going to compare it to a saved game time and see if, um, if it's better or worse. Uh, but really, to go any further than this, I think I'm going to want to... Um, to introduce some menus. So we'll follow on with some UMG stuff and uh, and then go to there. So what we covered here was uh, a timer, how to create a real basic timer. Uh, there's other ways to do this, I know. Um, this works for me uh, and, and the way I want to run things later because we are going to have something go off of true here. Uh, we're going to have another branch before this because uh, we're going to start the level uh, it's not going to start counting right when the level starts. You'll have to click a button later. 
Um, but more importantly, we got this uh, actor blueprint to uh, talk to our uh, ball uh, blueprint, our, our uh, pawn blueprint, uh, and pass a value to that. So I ca uh, using the cast, we cast it to the uh, physics ball blueprint, and we're able to set our Boolean to end the level. All right, see you next time.